three, two, and one. All right, welcome back to another episode of Persuasion by the Pint. I'm Jonathan Taylor, along with Sean McCool. You know, I almost forgot what to say, Sean, because we miss a week and you're just kind of like... miss one week and it's like <laughs> starting all over. I don't, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Um, but yeah, well, you do today, have a few, uh, you have a few other shows between this one. So that's right. That's right. As long as I didn't say, welcome to composites weekly podcast or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I think we're good to go. Yeah. Um, today we're doing a flight. Um, yeah. we're doing, we actually had a guest, uh, scheduled today. We were going to talk, get into, um, uh, making courses the, like the, the, how to make, uh, you know, information courses, more persuasive, you know, the yeah. science behind that, all that cool stuff. But our guest emailed us yesterday and she's got the flu. So, yeah. Well, it's better than showing up five minutes before the show and tell us they have the flu. <laughs> yes, exactly. We've had that happen. <laughs> We've had that happen as well. So um, that's right. So yeah. But man, yeah, these, these kids, man, they're, they're with their weakness, you know, they're, they just can't stay healthy. So I know, I know. We'll, we'll, got the, we'll take the up her slack and she can, must be Take working our too slack hard. next week. We'll make sure we both have strong beers next week so she can That's just right. run with it. That's right. Uh, but yeah, that'll be a good show. Um, Rachel is her name, and I've known her for quite a while. When I first yeah. got into copywriting, she was kind of in that world, and she's found her niche now in producing some pretty cool course stuff. So we'll we'll talk about that and very cool all that. But today, today we're talking about. Direct mail, the resurrection of direct mail, the resurgence <laughs> of direct mail. That's right. That's right. Base hits in marketing are just baseball and marketing, kind of the similarities. Some of the similarities, yeah. since it is, I guess yesterday was opening day as we record this. That's right. Although for the Braves, today is opening day because the game got postponed yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, I think they're playing right now. So. Yeah. We we'll have to put that up in the corner. I think and right. they're playing the uh, the Sillies today the sillies oh yes those sillies yeah well um so my, uh, and then we're also going to talk a little bit about villains yes how do you use more villains in your copy oh i love marketing? this yeah and it's uh it's easier than people think like it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be like i think if you told a lot of people that they have a certain kind of idea in mind mm -hmm. uh, but it's actually much broader and easier to use villains than you might think and there's a lot more of them than you might think yeah, because we hear all about the hero, right? Yeah. I want to hear but, more about this villain out here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so do your so do your clients and the prospects. <laughs> yeah, the prospects want to hear more about them too. Because that's what they're actually worried about. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, what, that's what keeps them up at night, right? Yeah, because I mean, they are the hero, right? So if they're the hero, obviously they would be more drawn yeah. to hearing about the villain. Yep. Because they're the hero, not us. Well, well, we're right. going to ta talk about those uh, monsters that are hiding under the bed and yeah. the closet. And Absolutely. In your head. <laughs> All the places. All the places. All Buffer. right. So you've got an interesting uh, pick for your brew today. Mm -hmm. Going back with an oldie. <clears throat> yes. But a goodie. Uh, I'm going with the Guinness. It just, you know, I was craving this. Um, a Guinness. Uh, drought stout uh, feel like the perfect time uh, for it because if you know anything about a Guinness uh, or these particular stouts they get the I don't, I don't think you can hear it on the uh, on the microphone Sean I don't want to shake it up too much because I might well, yeah, get if, splashed if you, yeah if you still got liquid in there don't shake it too much but <laughs> it's got that nice pop you should have saved the pop for the microphone that would have been good pop yes. the top it's got that nice little sizzle to it Yes. It's very, uh, it's very, uh, there you go. Oh, you just opened the second one. Nice. Yeah, that's right. Cause I'm going to have two. That's a very like ASMR type yeah. sound, right? I love that. <laughs> it's like very that. soothing. Very yeah. soothing. It's um, like a little, it's like the waves coming up on the shore at the ocean. That's right. Not that I could this just record great... this and this would put me to sleep at night. Yeah. This is probably not the best beer for the beach, but, um, yeah. So anyway, so I don't know the copy. You've got it in front of us. It's, um, I don't know. I just had a craving for it, man. It's yeah, just, it's I mean, it's light classic, and refreshing to me. Yeah. It's the classic know? stout, right? And, yeah. um, it does have the widget is what they call that thing in the bottom. 
then yes. it's a little it's a mini ping pong ball yep and with nitrogen in it to keep things feeling very pubby when you yep. pour it so you get that nice head mm -hmm. and freshness from it so yep. it's like a little mini keg i guess or something so, yeah so yeah just a classic stout and i'm kind of similar in my choice today i've got a coffee milk stout from ah. local place that's about three or four miles down the road front yard brewing Ooh. um it's a good good beer standard two row malt black malt chocolate malt crystal 60 guatemalan coffee beans and madagascar vanilla i've had this one on here before yeah um and yeah it's about 6.4 percent and it's a just a good simple milk That's stout. beautiful head right there beautiful yep. beautiful mine's a little mine's gone down a little bit since i poured it but so yeah all right well let's cheers it up let's cheers mm. i love the way the ring light reflects in a good stout <laughs> I just noticed that. That's cool. Yeah. I've actually got like a really large ring light on the other side of the room. Uh -huh. My room's not as big as yours, but yeah, just to give that nice little bit of light, but not be in my eyes. Do you, are you on the eyeglasses right now? No, you know, it, it didn't work when you first, when uh, Mac first updated their stuff. Oh, uh, okay. So, and I've just never, I keep forgetting to go in and update it and make, are you using eyeglasses now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I like your look. I want to make the, I want to do the update because I like the, uh, well, I don't have the update. This is straight out of, um, it, well, it's the, it's the MacBook update from yeah. probably four or five months ago. Mm -hmm. And up, and up, ne up in the, the date bar, yeah. at the very top, there's a little picture of the camera. Okay. And if I press portrait, so this is without the portrait, that's with the portrait. It just blurs the background mm -hmm. a little bit. And then with studio light or without studio light and with studio light. Oh, that's cool. I love that. The studio light's really nice. Yeah. That's a nice touch. Um, yeah. That's cool. So, yeah, I need to. So I haven't, I haven't really needed. The only thing is I can't pan in as close as I could with eyeglasses, which I do like right. better, especially when I'm getting on a long call and I'm like way back here. Yeah. Everybody else is like up in there with the full head <laughs> and I'm like way back here. I'm like, yeah, kind of being standoffish here. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway. I like standoffish. Uh, that's, that's my go-to. Um, so yeah, that's cool. I like, I love the depth of, uh, the depth of field or whatever they call it with the blurred effect in the yeah. background. Yeah. So, so it's just like the portrait setting on your iPhone. Yeah. Basically. Okay, cool. So yeah, it's pretty cool. But yeah, it, it goes away if you lean back then it. Right. Because the plane yeah. changes. Yeah. So. <coughs> All right. Super cool. Well, let's jump into where you want to start. Oh, we got, so we're not going to do a rating oh, yeah. today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, man. So you forgot what to say. I forgot we do ratings on the show. <laughs> uh, week off, man. Ooh, this falls <laughs> apart. I know. I'm giving mine a 4.8. Um, right. I love I love me Guinness drought. So it's good. I'm going to I'm gonna see your 4.8 and uh, keep it right there. I'm not going to raise. I'm going to see your four, eight. This is just a good quality coffee stout. It's not too much coffee. Mm -hmm. It's not too bitter. Right. Like it's just right on the money. It's one of my favorite coffee stouts for sure. Mm. So, and that's low, that's local, right? In your backyard, right? Yeah, man, their, their place. Um, let me sh I'll show you a picture of it. Oh, look at that with a little, it's a little, uh, drone cam. Yeah. So you sit out here on this turf and the sun sets like right mm -hmm. back there. Yeah. Every afternoon it is just absolutely, it's kind of up on a hill. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice, Oh, look nice at that place. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It, it's very like, it's very well done. It's not like a, just a, mm -hmm. they have pickleball courts. Yeah. I see that and a pickleball league at the there so it's pretty wild in the next door they have a wine bar oh man that's beautiful kind of cool so if you Look you know if you take if you like beer and the missus likes wine it's a great this place has got everything i love right here pizza beer <laughs> pickleball pickleball beer and pizza and yep. 
burgers. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it depends on the food truck that's there. The pizza truck, I think, is always there, and then sometimes they have other food trucks. But yeah, it's a great little, great little hangout. There's going to be an eclipse party there. Oh yeah, uh, that's coming up. Coming up, right? So, yeah. and we should talk about that next week, I guess. The, yes. Yeah. Very timely. The marketing of the eclipse. It's great because <laughs> we're well. You remember in in Knoxville? What was that? Se- six seventeen. It was, it was 20, there 2017 or, or 18 20. Yeah. yeah. I think it was 2017. Yeah. So yeah, we're having the same thing here as we had when I was in, you know, back in Knoxville. Right. So I, I'm like, what are the odds that I'm in the path of totality oh. for two eclipses in my lifetime? <laughs> and I didn't even travel. Like I just live right. in those two places. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's gotta be, that's gotta be pretty rare. That is so, crazy. So, yeah. So we got our scores. Now we can move on. Right. Now we can move on. Have we missed anything else? (laughs) Nope. Nope. We can move on. We can move on. So where do you want to start? I, I, you know, I was reading this article. We'll start with the resurrection of, or the resurgence of direct mail. Notice I use resurrection timely for the weekend. Use baseball. I use resurrection. Um, We're we're on it. (laughs) Despite our fumbles, we're we're on it. Uh, So I found this interesting, like, and and I think we've kind of touched on this on past episodes where I think there there's a definitely becoming a um, a greater interest. You know, everybody's gone digital yep. um, to the point where there's always a boomerang effect eventually. <laughs> yep. So um, I, I'm reading this article and we'll post a link to it, but uh, it's a Forbes article um, that shows stats are showing a, a growing interest in direct mail among consumers in tw- So this is going back a couple of years. Back in 2020 alone, direct mail showed an ROI of 43%. Once written off as old and ineffective, direct mail is back. Marketing like uh, marketing like things or marketing like many things, experiences, ebbs and flows, and the medium through uh, which we market seems to be the same. Right now, direct mail is growing in popularity, and we as marketers must take advantage of this trend. Um, yes. and I totally agree. We've, I don't think we've ever been off the, the, uh, <laughs> the direct no, mail. No, <laughs> we, we've, we have brought examples on the show. We've yeah. been trying to tell you people, <laughs> we've been trying to tell you, and now the science is, you know, the, the trends are backing it up. Yeah. Um, that, you know, 2022, 43% ROI. And now that, you know, Facebook ROI mm-hmm. and some of these other online mediums have gotten, you know, full maturity. Yeah. They don't have the ROI and now the mailbox is wide open. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I don't know about you, Jonathan, but I get, I still get a lot of like local, um, you know, the little magazines that are full of like coupons and things like that, the Val packs or the, Mm -hmm. the local magazine, but I'm not, I'm still not. And I get, of course, a lot of credit card offers, but other than those, I'm not getting any direct mail from any company Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I guess we've talked about HelloFresh. They do a pretty good job of checking in mm-hmm. every once in a while because I was a customer yeah. once. But other than that, I don't really get much from, you know, all the companies that I interact with online, either through their Instagram, through their, that I yeah. bought stuff from. Right. I'm not getting any direct mail follow up from them. I'm no. not getting, you know, anything. So it's wide open for those people and I think if you ran the numbers, mm-hmm. like, you know, I was talking to Ben who runs, you know, Facebook ads. I mean, a lead these days can cost one to two bucks. I'm not talking about a sale, like a lead. Just a lead. From Facebook yeah. can cost one to two bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you can put a letter in the mail for that same amount and get in somebody's, in front of somebody. Now, you may not, yeah. you may not capture their name. Right but you can still get in front of them in a different way. And if you do some, you know, if you go to your past customers and re-engage, then that's really powerful. Or if you send out, you know, postcards yeah, with the QR code and then retarget online. And that's what I think this article was, you know, the next, the subheading they put in there was tradigital marketing instead of traditional or digital. It's Mm -hmm. tradigital marketing and taking this combination of the two, yeah. And I think that's the sweet spot. Oh, absolutely. You know, whether you're right. following up with direct mail 
yeah. from their online interaction or vice versa. You try to get them with direct mail and then push them back so you can follow them around online. Mm-hmm. The perception of size is just so much bigger if if you you know do direct mail and social media or online presence. Yeah. And it's... Well, it's, it's funny because, you know, they it's it's crazy, the information. And a great example of this is I was, I think it was, it was back last month, I was traveling. I was traveling through a Denver airport mm-hmm. and I stopped in a department store there because I needed, um, uh, I needed to pick up a, a dress shirt and I ended up, um, it was f- for a meeting the next day and I went in the department store um, and I'll just, I'll get the, it's Johnson and Murphy. Okay. So I'll just gave them, I just gave them a plug right there. Um, but anyway, I just went in and, you know, bought an item of clothing and within like a week and a half or so I'm getting like their, you know, catalog in the mail. I've never gotten a catalog in the mail, but you know, nice. right after that I get, I, I get the follow up. you know, so they're, yeah. you know. They're doing it. So they took my information. I get my information because obviously they give you a little discount or whatever on the, mm-hmm. on See, the See, most sale. people aren't even doing that. They're not even collecting the data. Right. Yeah. So they're collecting the data there and, uh, you know, within about a week and a half, you know, there's a, there's a catalog in the mail from, from them, you know? Yeah. The thing is, there if you you're, go. if you're an online seller, especially if you're in the physical product space where you're shipping stuff to their house anyway. Oh. Yeah. You know, supplements, you know, get gadgets, whatever. Um, but even if you just get their credit card number, you're often, you're getting their, you know, it's a push of a button on your settings to get the address as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people don't, don't, most people are not going to put up a too much fuss there. Even if they're ordering an ebook, a lot of times they will put in their, their, cause you have to put in your billing information. Yeah. So you can capture that. Yep. And man, if, if all you did for a, I mean, imagine for a $29 ebook or something like that, or a course, you know, maybe it's a hundred bucks. And I don't think I've ever had this happen in 20 years of buying stuff online where I've gotten a thank you letter (laughs) from a digital seller. Never. Yeah. I mean, I haven't. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, some, you know, early in the days you would get the product itself because it was CDs or binders or things like that. And it might have a cover letter that says, thank you, but not for digital products. Mm -mm. No, you get a thank you page, but why not get a thank you letter in the mail? Right. Right. I mean, how? I mean, I I can't remember any time ever that I've seen that. I know you and I talked one time, we, we both have used the road ID, Mm -hmm. um, bracelets great for travel, you know, Mm -hmm. if you're out hiking or sports or riding your, originally it was for bike cycling. Um, they did a nice job when you Mm -hmm. order handwritten postcard, but even then, even then they did such a great job starting, but I rarely ever hear from them after that. Right. No follow up. Yeah. Lost opportunity. There's even, I mean, how much a postcard, right? I mean, it's like postcard. You put somebody in a campaign and boom, it should be automated. Just like that. And there are tools now, especially with, um, in the physical product space, e-com space. If you use Clavio as your email provider, which Mm -hmm. most like supplements and a lot of these companies do, there's, there's postcard companies that integrate with Clavio that will automatically send it out at different milestones. So if they, if they miss their 30 day renewal, they pause it, Mm -hmm. it sends them out a postcard with a discount, right? Like there's these tools now that will do all that for you. You know, it's just crazy that more people aren't using that. Yeah. Uh, Cause the mailbox is sitting there fairly empty. <laughs> yeah. Really I mean, <laughs> we've talked about it. It's like, I actually like going, you know, it's kind of one of those enjoyable trips, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, you, you know, it's the not mailbox. that far. It's, I mean, unless you got a big ranch or something, you know, then you can take the gator down there. That's right. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, just going down the end of the drought. And a lot of times people don't take their phone to the mailbox. Right. You know, maybe they have their yep. dog with them or, you know, but a lot of times I'll, I'll go down, nothing else in my hands. And so what do you do on the way back? You look at each one, flip through yeah. them. You know, and what are and the most, the ones that capture your attention the most are the ones that, you know, typically it's a, 
um, you know, standard envelope, right. That's, uh, you know, that's, that appears to be handwritten. You know, some of these, you can fake the handwriting nowadays. I mean, it's all printed, you know, but it looks handwritten on the, um, you know, on the address. And yep. a lot of times there's no return yep. addresses like, okay, that's really got my curiosity going. Who yeah. is this from? So you better if it's it shaped, off. if it's shaped like a birthday card or an invitation to yep. those, I like that size. Envelope. Oh yeah. Yep. But a really good postcard, mm-hmm. you know, it, you don't have to open it. Like it's just going to get read, you know? Yeah. Um, right. And I think this article mentioned, you know, use QR codes so that, yeah. When people do get back inside and they pick their phone back up, they can just scan. They don't have Scanning. to, right? You know, they don't have to type in an address or you know take the postcard to their their laptop or whatever. Um, but yeah, there's so many ways you could use that. We'll we'll have to go a little bit deeper on this on a on a future show. Probably we should probably find a a follow up expert because that's really what we're talking a lot about here. Yeah, but you yeah. could also use the mail for acquisition as well. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, I gave you, I think I told you last week, I sent a FedEx. Mm-hmm. Uh, you didn't overnight. tell the show. You didn't tell the people what you told me. <laughs> okay. Well, I got to tell my story now. Yeah. Um, sent uh, a FedEx and I, I think I've mentioned this before. Cartoonstock.com. Yep. Cartoonstock.com. That's where I go. I've downloaded several little cartoons because the great thing about it is they got a little search engine. You can get on there, type in, like if you're, if you're trying to, uh, you know, add a little levity to a tense negotiation and you want to follow it up with a funny cartoon, you just go to cartoonstock.com and you can do, um, you know, you can type in sales meeting, Sean, and it'll give you some funny, um, you know, funny cartoons about a sales meeting. And <laughs> there you go. And so I went, you know, I sent one, there's one that I have, it's a cartoon that says, uh, I got your proposal. The buyer is sitting at his desk and he goes, he's got a little kit on, uh, how to, um, how to, you know, origami, you know, where you make the shapes out of different things. It's like that Japanese little, yep. um, so he's got this kit on how to, uh, how to do origami. And he goes, I got your proposal and I'm just making a few minor, uh, adjustments to it. And he's got, you know, he's got the proposal and he's making shapes out of it. So, yeah. and I sent this to a buyer and he called me immediately the next day and said, I was laughing my ass off. Thanks for sending that. And he's like, call me next week. Let's set up a meeting. So for those people who may not have heard before on, on what you <clears throat> exactly you send. Yeah. It's- oh, so, so you down, here's what you do. You download the cartoon Okay. So it's it's like twelve dollars. You get the okay. right you get the rights to the cartoon. Then you take that cartoon and you can do it. You can do it a, a few different ways. I use uh, a lot of times. I use Vista Print, but they'll have these um, options where you can you can put them on like a foam board. It's like a uh, I'm trying to remember. Like the you dimensions. use it as like a, your kid's science fair. Yeah, like that. yeah. It's, it's like a, a hard thick poster board. Yeah, thick poster board. It's like maybe uh, a couple of feet by one to two feet. You know, just and it's it's about this thick. You know, yeah. so it's so you can take that image and go over to Vista Print, or you can use um, you can even use like Office Depot or something like. I mean, they have they do those foam boards too. Yep. You upload the image, and then they will you know you uh, kind of do the alignment on the foam board, and then. You just order however many you want. So I order like a few sets of these things and I'll send them out occasionally. Like if I don't hear a response from somebody or if it's a follow-up to typically it's obviously it's a follow-up to a proposal that I've sent. I don't get any follow-up or I don't get any response uh, right away. I'll FedEx this overnight. (laughs) And usually that'll get, that gets a response because they're like, oh my gosh, you know, because it's FedEx delivered. It's FedEx. It's what eighteen by twenty four, probably most yeah, of the time. Yeah, they get this. Yeah, they get the sleeve envelope that's FedExed yeah. and delivered straight to them. And yeah. uh, you know, and I no, get it. I get no it tracking. Most yeah, gatekeepers exactly. not going to open that. No, because it's FedEx, right? <laughs> yeah. And you'll you know you'll spend you know depending on who you're sending this to, you might spend thirty thirty bucks. But if it's 
30 or 40 bucks, but you know, if it's worth it, you know, if it's a significant proposal and you're trying to uh, win the business or win a client, um, you know, it's worth the investment to get in front of them. Right. Yeah. Imagine if, you know, I'm thinking about some of these, you know, high ticket coaching, you know, things in, in the online world, you know, people are trying to sell high ticket coaching for, yeah, you know, anywhere from three to 15,000, you know, done for you services, 25, 30,000 or, or right. year long masterminds. Right. Yeah. That's enough. You know, that's enough that you could justify this. If you've got maybe, you know, if you went through and you, you looked at your week mm -hmm. and you had all these calls and you had a couple that were just kind of close, but not quite there, you know, you'd have to work with your sales team or whatever. Right. You pick out three or four of those and you send them something like that. That's going to leave an impression. Absolutely. And, and yeah. I would bet that if you sent, I bet out of five of those, one of those might end up converting. Mm -hmm. If they were close anyway, and they just, you know, yeah, just didn't quite pull the trigger. Like it's enough of a difference to, to get back in the conversation. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. I really like that. Um, it's a personal, those, it's a personal approach. And when, when you're dealing with people that all they see is email and they get phone calls and this is, it's pattern interruption. I mean, I, you know, something I, you know, in the middle of their day, if it's a hectic day, they get something that's funny that comes to them via FedEx, they open it up yep. and it's from you. And, you know, along with the FedEx, I put like a, I had a handwritten card in there, you know, just kind of filled it out and, uh, you know, wrote out like, two or three paragraphs handwritten, you know, cause it's worth the time. It's worth the investment. You know, you gotta, you gotta look at what, what your time is worth or, you know, and obviously it takes time, you know, if it's a significant business account, if it's a significant amount of business, or if it's somebody that's done business with you, um, you got to look at the ROI on that and say, yeah, it's worth my, you know, 10 minutes of my time to sit down and write out a thoughtful, uh, yep piece of correspondence to them along with this, you know, this funny, hilarious cartoon. <laughs> so, yep. uh, and it works, it works. I mean, nine times out of 10, you're going to get a response. I mean, somebody's going to say, now I can't guarantee it's going to give you the business, but it's going to, it's going to put you further along, you know, down the, down the line of getting that. And, and I think no matter what it will, if they left with a bad taste in their mouth, even, and mm -hmm. you know, they're a good prospect. They just didn't trust you maybe. Right. I think it will put you back in their good graces because it's Absolutely. a little self-deprecating humor. Of course. Kind of going over the top. <laughs> like there's like, here's one I came up with for, for that niche I was talking about. Um, yeah. This one on the right. Mm -hmm. Just a, it's just a big bo <laughs> billboard that says buy a message from the association of good and services, goods and services. <laughs> like, <That's perfect. laughs> it's like, <laughs> Yeah, we know we want you to buy, right? It's like you're not <laughs> taking great. yourself too seriously. That's right. Exactly. Um, have a buy, buy now, pay later this afternoon. <laughs> it's like uh, inflation's picking up. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So well, these are all good. Yeah. So <clears throat> And they're fun. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the big thing. They're, they're definitely fun. So it's, a, well, yeah, they, they add, like I said, they add some to a stressful, you know, to, to, to a person's stressful day. They add a tremendous amount, a, you know, a, a little, I wouldn't say a tremendous amount, but a little bit of levity throughout the day. That's like, ah, oh. cause he, he left a, a voicemail after that. And yeah. in fact, it was on a Friday that he called me. Uh, this was a couple of Fridays back. In fact, I think we were doing a show when he called and left a message because after one of our podcasts, I got the message and it said, I'm laughing. I got your package and I'm laughing my ass off me, yeah. me and one of my other, the other guys that are, is in my office. So, yeah. So it's awesome. great. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about what's next on our list of topics to see baseball. Let's talk a little bit ba about baseball. baseball today. So yesterday was opening day as we're That's recording right. this. Yep. Um, and you know, we've talked about the movie Moneyball. It's one of your favorite movies, Jonathan. Um, My favorite sports uh, movie of all times. Yeah. Moneyball. And one thing I remember when I was working uh, at Agora and we, you know, we had a room full of copywriters. We were always trying to put out copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that you had some copy that would just 
the home run, like end of America, you know, grand slam walk off home run. Um, yeah. Those just don't happen very often. No. And it can be easy to think when you're, when you're in this marketing space that everything is supposed to work. Right. right. Cause that's kind of how the gurus come across. It's like, yeah, if you just follow this formula, you know, riches fall from the sky, <laughs> but that's not actually how it happens. It's much yeah. more like baseball. Right. Where sometimes you strike out, sometimes Singles, you get a base doubles. hit, yeah. doubles, triples, and sometimes you get a Walks. home run, <laughs> but they're pretty <laughs> like rare. Walk. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I just, I wanted to remind people as opening, uh, as we open baseball season that you don't want to get too hung up on any given results. If you just yeah. keep going to the plate and you keep swinging, you keep putting out different marketing mm -hmm. ideas, you will get the base hits. You will, as long as you're following basic principles, um, you understand the rules of the game. You know, it's like baseball. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go from the dugout and stand on third and wait for a pitch. <laughs> right? That would just be weird. It just yeah. wouldn't work. You do have to go to the right place, have yeah. a basically, you know, similar stance to what good hitters have. Mm-hmm with your unique personality and that kind of stuff. Right. And and then go from there and swing and, you know, and keep going. So and understanding that success in any field, I mean, think about the, the batting averages and you, I mean, you have a 300 batting average in, in, in major league baseball. It's hall of fame. pretty damn good. Um, yeah, it's, it's over a career. That's pretty much hall of fame right there. That's hall of fame. And, and think about what that means is it's like, one out of three. Yeah. yeah. You're a third, of, only a third of the time you're, you're successful. And that's right? just getting on base. That's not even getting back to that's home. Right. right. That's just getting on base really. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And same is true in sales, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I don't care where, you know, you and I have both been in a lot of sales positions. Yes. And across the board, the average is 30% of your appointments close. Right. Right. I mean, unless you're just terrible. Yeah. But, Almost to the, it doesn't matter, you know, I mean, there are some people that push the boundaries and they'll get 50% or something like that. Yeah. But across the industries, it's about 30%, which is, right. you know, the same as, and, and it, that holds true in marketing as yep. well. Yeah. So I was, right. while I was thinking about this, I was like, oh, I'm going to see if anybody else has written about this online, you mm -hmm. know, about baseball and marketing. Um, and I did find one article and it had a really good section. So I wanted to, I wanted to share it. Um, oh, sweet. Marketing for hippies, marketing for hippies, <laughs> ethical marketing for uncertain times. That's nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice hook. <laughs> so I don't know how old this article is. It doesn't have a date on it, uh, which I think is smart. I think you should never date your blogs. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah, you, you want uh, them to, to appear timeless. Cause yeah. it, as soon as you put a date on there, if it's old, people won't read it. Yeah. It was like, ah, oh, um, that was 2012. I'm not reading yeah, that. I'm not reading that. Principles change. <laughs> um, I'm looking for tactics, not principles. <clears throat> right, exactly. Um, yeah, so this was kind of a cool way to think about um, marketing. He said, home base is a stranger. First base is clarity. They get what it is that you do. Second base is trust. They begin to like you. Mm. Third base is excitement. You start hearing them say, I should hire you. And then home base is they pay you the money and assign the contract. Ah, and I think that really fits, especially for the kind of work you do, Jonathan, where you're, yeah, it's a longer sure. sales cycle. It but is. Even if you think about social media, right? I mean, you're going, you're trying to get them from stranger to a little bit of clarity about what you do, to a little bit about trust, to excitement, right. to like, hey, I want to hire this guy. Yep. I thought that was a really good baseball analogy for, mm hmm our opening day here. And, uh, that was, and sometimes my, you can get thrown out at third base. Yes. I mean, <laughs> you may, you make it a long way. You make it down the, uh, down to yep. third base and then something gets derailed and for yep. whatever reason you get thrown out. So yep, just, uh, it happens. It's back, back at home plate again. So, yep. uh, yeah. So this was from marketing for hippies. And like it's called That's marketing. It's so funny that there is a website called Marketing for Hippies out there. I'm glad we could give them some. Uh... <laughs> yeah, his his name is Tad. Apparently, yeah, that's cool. Tad Hargrave. We have to have him on. <laughs> I love I will, it. I, I love will, it. I will uh, 
He looks like he should be in Austin. If yeah. I scroll down and he's down here in Austin, I'm going to be like. <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, it, it feels he, like. He does seem like you, I mean, I don't see an address, but. Yeah. He, uh, let's see if he gave up Instagram. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where, oh, British Columbia. He must be in Canada. Ah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. These are all look like. Yep. yep. He's a Canadian. Canadian. <laughs> Canadian, yeah. hey? <laughs> I didn't know they had hippies in Canada. Man, you learn something every day on this show. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. So yeah. We- so, and then the final thing we want to talk about. Villains. Villains. Dun, dun, Villains. Dun, dun, dun. Greatest um, villain of all time. Mm, ooh. <laughs> Man, that's a good question. Uh, think, of, think of any movie genre greatest villain of all time wow that's a tough one what's your answer you asked the question well i joker comes to mind because of the bat the whole batman thing yeah but i know there's a lot of villains it's it's not just we're not talking superhero uh genre here yeah. um but i think in the superhero world joker's definitely up there yeah because um, he just i know i think i think the greatest villain of all time has to be darth vader yeah that's true yeah, that's true. I think that's got to be way up there on the list anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right there. Um, I think there's more, you know, there's different varieties. There's more terrifying. There's more s- sinister. There's like different different types of villains for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Darth Vader is just like the the ultimate well, bad, you especially know, when you I, get I, into the backstory. Ro- have you seen this new Roadhouse movie? No, I saw it show up on, on Hulu. Um, <laughs> and it's funny cause the picture on Hulu is Conor McGregor. Yeah. You know, cause I think he's one of the bad guys. Is yeah. He's, were. he's a villain, <laughs> but I was, I was scrolling through something else and we were trying to figure out what to watch. And I was like, let's, let's see what people are saying about roadhouse. <laughs> and one of my friends on Facebook was like, he, McGregor is the worst actor I've ever seen in my entire life. He's like, he's not bad. He was horrible. He's terrible. So it's, it's, it, it does not, it's an embarrassment to the original because I like the original movie. Yeah. The original was a good movie. And all the the eighties were good, right? Yeah. I mean, they keep trying to knock off and redo these eighties movies and they're just, the acting all fall kind of flat. Yeah. Acting in this was terrible. Even the, some of the action scenes were okay, but, um, Connor Connor McGregor in this movie made you, <laughs> made you want to hate him because he's just yeah. he's just a jackass. But yeah, um, he's certainly not one of the worst ones. But he was uh, his acting skills are not there. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I, I, yeah. As soon as he, they, my friend said that, I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. waste the time on that. So um, yeah, so yeah, I'd say Darth Vader. Um, I will say he's gotten Jack though. <laughs> Yeah, he's yeah he's, he's definitely huge. He's trying to get to heavyweight, I guess. I don't. He'll yeah. never. I don't know if he'll ever fight again, though. He's, I don't think so. I, I thought he'd gone into wrestling now or something. Oh, has he? I know he's coaching a lot. He's running fight yeah. camps and things like that. But yeah, which hey, if you're going to be in the in the UFC business, I mean that's for sure much safer place to be for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, we'll have to talk about on an upcoming episode. We'll have to talk about Tyson versus. Oh yes. Paul yeah. as a marketing from a marketing yeah. perspective, because it is absolutely just killing it on that front. Oh, I know. I know. Uh, we, well, we'll have, we might have some time here mm-hmm. after villains. We could jump into that. Okay. All right. So here's, I was looking up, um, I don't know where I came across this, but I was just thinking about, you know, different ideas. And one thing I saw, Oh, I, I think this was in, um, the newsletter we've mentioned pin pivot. That's right. Oh, yes. This. Yeah. So if you haven't heard us talk about Pin Pivot, it's a great daily newsletter for marketers. They always have some great templates and some other stuff mm-hmm. in there. Yep. Um, and that's where this came from. So, and it's always good. Like, you know, there's so many techniques and tactics and strategies in, in writing copy and marketing that it's easy to forget about stuff, you know, and yeah. just not do it. Right. So it's good to have newsletters like this that will remind you or shows like this that will remind you. It's like, oh yeah, I haven't used a villain in a while in my copy. And that's immediately what I thought when I saw this. I was like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not really doing a good job of using villains. Right. But villains can be a lot more than, I think 
just because of movies and TV and everything else, we tend to think of villains as people. Yeah. Right. So we'll think it's a presidential candidate of one on one side or the other. Right. Or right. yeah. Whoever like, but there's a lot of villains that are not, you know, people or humans. In fact, most of the villains in your, cl- in your prospects world are not people. So an example would be if you, if your prospect is really into sustainability, mm. you know, maybe they're yeah. young they're kind of eco-conscious and all that, right. then fast fashion is an enemy. Yeah. Cause it's super wasteful. It's cheap. It doesn't last long. Yeah. So it's, you know, fast fashion would be an enemy of someone like Patagonia, right? So Patagonia is mm-hmm. big on sustainability. They'll repair your stuff. You can mail it back in. Yeah. They try to make their jackets last for 20 years. Right. You know, by the way, that's a great book. If you mm-hmm. haven't read, let my people go surfing about the Patagonia story is. Oh, really, cool. It's a really good buyer. It's right up there. I think with, um, shoe dog. From, oh, from Nike. It's, okay. Just about as good. The intro is a little preachy, but if you get past the, the or the forward, you know, when somebody else mm-hmm. writes it, yeah, that was a little preachy. But when you get past that, uh, let my people go surfing was, was really good. Um, real estate for first time buyers, mm. hidden costs yeah. are a yeah. enemy, Yep. right? Things they don't know about like, oh, you got to pay for an inspection. Oh, you got to pay for... <laughs> Yeah, you know all these different title fees and everything else, and you, like, you just don't realize all the stuff. Or you know, a lot of first-time buyers use, you know, FHA programs or HUD mm-hmm. program, you know, different programs that have lots of government right. fees in them. Right. Um, and if you don't know that, it can really take you by surprise. And it can, if you're a realtor or a mortgage broker, you can use that as an enemy mm-hmm. to move them towards your product or your service. Absolutely. Um, procrastination is an enemy. Yes. If you're trying to be productive. Yep. <clears throat> right. So if you mm-hmm. picture procrastination, I bet if we went to your cartoon stock, there's some stuff on procrastination for sure. Easily. Um, you know, as a monster and like, you know, we all have procrastination as a, as an yeah. enemy in yep. our day to day lives in one right. area or another. Yep. Um, let's say you're really trying to sell entrepreneurship then the nine to five lifestyle is an mm-hmm. enemy. Yeah. Like you don't want to get caught up in that. Absolutely. Um, the, the rat, the rat, what is it? The rat, the race? rat race. Yeah. The <laughs> rat race. Um, <laughs> if you're in the beauty industry, maybe harsh chemicals are an, in, are an enemy or yes. maybe high priced stuff is an enemy. Yeah. You know, you could take a lot of different, maybe cheap stuff's an enemy, right? Mm-hmm. You don't, you know, cause it's, you're not paying for good quality materials or, ingredients. Um, in gardening, if I'm, if I'm a gardener and I'm, you know, maybe I'm homesteading and I want to grow my own garden right? and there's all kinds of enemies, right? There's, there's invasive plants, there's, there's weeds, there's, mm-hmm. um, pests like aphids and things like that. And there's, you know, um, chemical runoff or whatever. Like there's so many things you could come up with that are enemies trying to sabotage your garden. Right. Yeah. And I think, um, I think like some of the allergy commercials, they kind of do this, right? They show like, they always show like the flowers and the grass is like these monsters coming after you. <laughs> so you take Flonase or whatever. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And, the, and Flonase is the, you know, the hero that saves you from the, mm-hmm. from the villains that are right. like grass and pollen and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, if you're Dave Ramsey and you're selling personal finance, <laughs> debt is the enemy. Yeah. And the villain. Cash is king. Debt is just the the worst thing. Yeah. That'll kill you. Yeah. Choke you out. But if you're Robert Kiyosaki, <laughs> debt is a great thing. <laughs> debt is good. Right. And <laughs> the enemy is being complacent or what's not amazing is debt. those two guys are friends. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like, I mean, and, and that's they both cool. own. And they both own probably close to a billion dollars worth of real estate or more. Of course. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, Cause I think I saw, um, Robert Kiyosaki has like $1.8 billion of real estate debt, mm-hmm. but he owns three or four times that. Yeah. And then Dave Ramsey, I, I saw a couple of days later, he has $600 million worth of real estate, but it's all paid for. 
Yeah. Right. But the net result is probably the same. Pretty much. Yeah. You, you think know, about I, it. Their income stream is probably pretty similar mm-hmm. off of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause Kiyosaki can leverage a little bit more. He's probably got a little bit more, you know, income coming in, right. but Dave Ramsey's not servicing debt. So That's it right. probably balances out, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, um, so here's a couple more bullet points. So some other villains in your prospects world might be products or services that, that don't deliver. Yeah. All right. They just don't do what they said they would do. Um, their internal struggles, you know, depression can be a villain. Um, yeah. anxiety Fear. can be a villain. Fear yeah. can be a villain. Yeah. Of course, big corporations, that's an easy target, right? Um, the industrial food complex, like, you know, I remember doing that a lot in, when I wrote copy, especially yeah. long form copy, it would, you know, you always had the, uh, military industrial complex. I came up with like the, the, the food industrial complex or mm-hmm. the biopharma industrial complex. Like yeah. there's yeah. a lot of things you can put like that, give that same feeling <laughs> of the military, military industrial complex right. to a lot of other smaller, smaller niches. Right. And it instantly makes it feel like gross and slimy and yeah, you know, people out to get you. Of course. Um, and then the last two outdated practice, these aren't the last two, these last two on the list, outdated practices. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. Direct mail. Yep. <laughs> it's outdated, yeah. right? That's right. Um, yeah. No completely outdated. It. Don't use it. <laughs> um, and then bad habits is another, mm-hmm. like there's, you know, you could go on and on, but the point here is like, there's a lot more enemies. And I bet if you went to, you know, chat GPT or some AI and you said your niche and your avatar mm-hmm. and you said, list, um, list as many villains or enemies of, for this avatar as possible. It might not do a great job, but if you then put in some of these examples, yeah, it would, it would do a great job finding more. Right. Um, so I would put in a list like this, you know, do for instance, um, you know, fast fashion for sustainability, hidden mm-hmm. costs in real estate, yeah. procrastination and productivity. You give it three or four examples and it'll, it'll give you another 25 or 50 to, to choose from. Yeah. Right. So. No, yeah. I mean, that's, that's good. You got to think about like, there has to be an enemy to target your, uh, you know, your, your, frustration frustration all your frustrations and then all of the angst has to go towards that and it doesn't you're right Sean it doesn't necessarily have to be a person mm-hmm. um but it has to be something that you can create and you know you going back to uh, Kiyosaki I think about his you know his rich dad poor dad like I don't even know I mean who knows if that's a real thing like yeah like he had a poor dad like his poor dad was obviously you know, his, the enemy, I mean, he had a rich dad, he had a, uh, his, his, um, you know, his biological dad is the one that said, you know, go to school, yeah, you know, get a good job, you know, get a what safe. Was that nine to five thing, right? That nine to five lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Although he was a teacher, so it was more like seven to, you know, right. seven to four or whatever. But he personified it, you know, he had, yes. he added personification to that with a person on, on one side and and then you see the the dichotomy between the the rich dad who is the guy that says no nah, you don't have to you know that's that's not how you go that's not how you become wealthy is is following that trajectory of a nine to five job or or going to school and getting good grades and yep. getting a safe job you know what's um, interesting about that as you talk about I never really thought about this before but it's interesting like I think the rich dad side when it's rich, but I think it's more interesting and more compelling because you mm-hmm. know less about that side. Right. Right. Like, you know, a lot more details about the poor dad side. Yeah. But the mystery of the rich dad side it makes it even just more alluring. <laughs> right. I yeah. I really thought about that before. No, yeah. you're right. Exactly. Cause you, you, you think about all the details that he talks about because he grew up, obviously he grew up with his, his poor dad. Yeah. But his rich dad is what gave him his financial education um, and understanding. But he does spend more time. It does seem like he spends more time 
uh, talking against, you know, the status quo, which I think is probably a good thing because that's the, you know, <laughs> is this the way you want to end? I mean, look at what the status quo has done for so many people out there, right? I mean, right. is this is this the kind of thing that you want to continue on? Is this the path you want to continue down? Because people have been following that path for years. <laughs> look where we are. So, um, you know, I think um, on this Mike Tyson, Jake Paul, mm -hmm. I think maybe we should call up our friends, um, Bill, since he was formerly a yes um, sports journalist. And he's oh, a, now perfect. a marketer. Yeah. Um, and get his take on this. I'm looking at an article real quick. You know, there's, mm -hmm. I'm sure there'll be a ton more articles, but uh, if you don't know, if you've been living under a rock, um, <laughs> Jake Paul, former YouTuber, now boxer, is going to battle Mike Tyson on July 20th mm -hmm. at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. And this will probably be, I think, one of the biggest fights ever. And it's not um, even, it's not going to be on pay-per-view. It's going to be, that's what I've heard. It's not on pay-per-view. Yeah. I don't know where it's, I haven't I heard it's exactly be, just regular TV, yeah. ESPN maybe or something. I think so. Yeah. Which is crazy. Cause I was like, I told my kids, I'm like, if that's on pay-per-view, I'll, I'll split it with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> And now they're like, you know, they're really talking about um, it being a real fight. Um, yeah. Because before it was kind of going to be an exhibition. And then, right. I think, no, I think all that was just, heated. I think all that was hype. I think that's, I think yeah. they are, if you watch the social media of both guys, man, they are just milking this perfectly. Of course. Of course. And uh, I think we, yeah, I think we should do a show on, on that coming up um, to really yeah. break that down and, and take a look at what's going on and, Maybe I could do a little research and find out how much money's behind all this and all that kind of stuff. But uh Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you had to pick right now, who do you who do you pick as a winner? Um I, I'm I'm probably gonna go Jake Paul just because I mean thirty years is a big, big difference. It, it is. And and you know, Tyson in his prime, no way. You know, Tyson yeah. would, would rip him, but uh, you know, Ty, you know, Tyson's now, you know, what is he? 58, 60, I think. I think he's 60. So, I mean, there's no way I know that, um, um, George Foreman fought when he was 60, you know, he came back into the ring, but, uh, yeah, I think, I think if, if it goes beyond three rounds, Jake Paul's chances get exponentially bigger. Yeah just because of conditioning and being younger and things like that. Um, he's also think, got a little bit longer reach. I mean, yeah. And I, <laughs> but man, if, if Tyson gets inside and gets an uppercut or, yeah, I mean, it's only going to take one or two. That's true. Uh, things go it, south though. You could, I'd be covering up my ears. If I <laughs> Watch for the clinch. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think it'll it'll be amazing to see the numbers. Yeah. I think I think this is going to be Super Bowl like, where there's going to be a lot of people who have never watched boxing tune in. Yeah, um, only thing missing at this point is Taylor Swift. If we can get <laughs> Taylor Swift involved somehow, maybe she can dump Kelsey and and start dating Jake Paul. <laughs> that would that would make it. They'll make a fortune. They, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> no doubt, man. That would be the ultimate. I mean, yeah. Good grief. So uh, that's, that's the, uh, obviously this is before October, but if there was going to be an October surprise, that would be it. Yeah. That's my prediction. Taylor Swift dumps Kelsey goes with Jake Paul. Yes. Um, to hype it up, get it up to the, to the, you know, yeah. the absolute biggest event yeah. it could be. And then you get Trump in there, you know? <laughs> so somebody did not, like, somebody on Facebook did not like that comment. My, my suggestion. <laughs> Get Taylor Swift, you get Trump in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Election year, like man, we could we could go all kinds of directions with this. But yeah, Stir let's stir the uh, pot, man. It'd be great. Yeah, let's try to get uh, our buddy Bill on here. Yeah, okay. Um, from yeah, Story Sales do. Machine, and and uh, see if we can talk about this in the next yeah. few weeks. We do have a couple guests coming up, so we'll have Rachel next week, um, yeah. and I think on the nineteenth we're going to have another friend of mine uh, who I used to work with. Um, 
that she's doing some pretty cool stuff around persuasion and, and, um, really f- positioning yourself as things get more and more commoditized, especially like in the coaching space and some of those spaces that have now gotten really commoditized. Right. Where it used to be, you could just kind of throw your name out there and you can't do that anymore. Yeah. As all these markets mature. So we'll have those people on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was just talking to somebody yesterday. Um, probably we'll have them on in April as well. So we might have a full, full lineup in April. Huge guest lineup coming. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so I'm looking forward to Rachel, uh, getting yeah. into delving into, uh, you know, uh, courses, uh, yeah, kind of what's the back changed. End. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, it's, we talk a lot about acquisition and things like that, but you know, a big piece of long-term customer value is, is how you deliver mm-hmm. that first big experience, which is, yeah. you know, in a lot of cases for online marketers is courses. Yeah. Um, and she's worked with some big names. She'll, she'll probably reveal that, um, yeah. next week when she talks. So yeah, very I, cool. I'm curious to see like, um, gamification and all the different stuff they're doing now with courses yeah. and that's yeah. available with, with AI and everything else. There we got AI in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're required by contract to uh, say that, yes. um, <laughs> Just in case they're listening, we want to give them, you know, credit the, yeah, the bots. Right. Um, we love AI. Yeah. We really do. We love. <laughs> Everybody's going to say it. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, I'd like to reach out to Brian. We need to reach out to. I want to follow up with Brian Kurtz. I was on one of his. Um, uh, he just did a breakthrough advertising uh, boot camp recently that I jumped in on. It was very good. I didn't get, I didn't get to get in all the live sessions because it was typically in the middle of the day. Yeah. Um, but some of the recordings were great. So I'm going to reach out to him and, and, uh, see if we can get him lined up for a, another, a follow-up show. Um, yeah, we may have to, yeah. It was rare that we were able to get him on our, our scheduled time. So we'll, we yeah. may have to, we may have to bend a little bit this time. But yeah. Yeah. We can, we can be flexible with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Of course, right. it's baseball season, so I don't know. He may be pretty, pretty tied. That's up. true. That's He's true. Big into baseball, so. <laughs> but yeah, good stuff. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, listen. You can find us at persuasionbythepint.com. You can find us on all of your platforms, um, all of your podcast uh, platforms, uh, YouTube, and then find us over at persuasionbythepint.com. Uh, if you check us out, if you're a first time listener, check us out. Leave us five stars. Mm-hmm. Because we know that you'll love the content. I mean, we only have like 350 something episodes out there. Something, um, something like that. But uh, Sean, it's been fun. We'll see you guys next week as we discuss a uh, creating courses with uh, our friend Rachel. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yep. See Take ya. Care. See ya.